All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for sticking around to hear me out. This session, we're going to talk about commerce from a developer's point of view, by which I mean, I presume, you already have some basic Drupal 8 development knowledge, and you also have basic knowledge of commerce, so you know what orders are, order items and products. If you don't have these, I think this session will be hard to follow. Um, all right. You'll see that the session is divided in different parts. I'll give you the opportunity to ask one or two questions after each part. If there is enough time left at the end of the session, you can ask more questions. Okay. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Robin. I'm a Drupal developer at Entity One. I've been developing in Drupal for the last six or seven years, I think. And I've contributed a few modules to Drupal.org. So if you ever have any questions about those modules or you just want to have a talk, those are my profiles on Drupal.org and on Drupal Belgium, Belgium Slack channel. Okay, today's topics are the structure of Drupal Commerce 2.x, the plugins provided by Commerce, order processes and price adjustments, price resolvers and event subscribers. To a lot of people, those topics may, may sound gibberish right now, but I hope at the end of this session, you all can say, oh yeah, I know all about those prices overs. Um, I'll be switching between my presentation, uh, some example codes, and the demo commercial website that I've set up. So if I'm all over the place, just tell me and I'll go slower. All right, first topic is just some general Drupal Commerce 8.x info. So it is recommended, like every other, every other module, that you install it with Composer because it has dependencies to external libraries, all made by Commerce guys, as you see right here, and other contract modules, which are needed for the address, uh, the inline entity form for the product variations, and to store revisions. Also, the latest version of Commerce Requires, requires you to run Drupal 8.6. All right, it also has one required dependency if you enable the price module, which you will do, otherwise you can't have a commerce website. You'll need the PHP extension BCMod. So in my uh, local development, I'm using PHP 7.1, but if you are using another version, you have to switch the version out, obviously. So for you guys who use Drupal VM, you have to add following lines to your uh, config.jml file to install those packages. SOAP is optional. It's only required when you have, for example, an external, you want to make an integration with an external payment provider, which only has an API which supports SOAP, for example, uh, DocData, then you also need to uh, um, uh, install the SOAP extension, PHP extension. All right, so the module structure of commerce, you have the base commerce module, which, which doesn't do a lot. It provides a, some base classes and a framework for all the sub-modules to work with. So you'll be installing a lot of these sub-modules when you install um, your, when you configure your sites. A lot of the modules are dependent with each other. So for example, if you install the order module, you also have to install the yeah, base commerce, obviously, the store module and the price module. And the store module has, again, other dependencies to other country modules uh, which are here listed. So most of the times, I think about uh, almost all those, all these modules will be enabled except for promotion. If you don't have any promotions on your website, you can uh, leave it disabled. Tax is also a module which isn't required. If you don't have any taxes on your website, you can all also leave that module disabled. All right, so I'm going to zoom in. I started making um, a schematic of Drupal Commerce, and when I finished, I'll zoom out again, I was thinking to myself, man, this is complicated. But actually, when you think about it, and when you figure this out and keep this in the back of your mind, it isn't complicated at all. It gives developers, people like us, great opportunities to extend Drupal Commerce, customize it. This so-called complicated structure makes commerce highly pluggable, which is the next part 
Are there any questions here? I don't think so, but if there are, you can ask them now. Okay, so I won't go over the full schematic, it's just to show, show you guys that um, there are a lot of different content entities, config entities, plugins, which you all can extend or alter or add extra functionality to. All right, first part, the plugins. So what are plugins? Plugins are basically um, classes which implement an interface. But what is the difference with a normal uh, class which implements an interface? It has a special little comments on top of the class which we call an annotation, and it allows to the, the class to be auto-discovered by Drupal. For example, I hope everyone here knows the block plugin to make custom blocks. Well, Commerce also has different plugins pr provided for you to use and to extend the system. Basically, every plugin you want to implement requires three steps to, uh, to do. The first step, I'm just going to show you the steps, then I will return to the slides. The first step is adding a class with the correct namespace. The second step is adding the special comments to your class. So this is annotation. And the third step is to implement your class. So every plugin we will uh, see today requires these three steps. Pretty simple. We'll start with the commerce condition. So what is a commerce condition? I'll show you. All right. So first of all, I made a little, I'm going to zoom in, demo dinosaur web shop so you can buy dinosaurs. Cool. Um, Real simple setup I'm going to show you. I just made one product type, a dinosaur product type, with one product variation, the dinosaur product variation. I'm going to show you what fields are configured on the uh, uh, product. So I just have a title, an image, then SKU. The price field, those two fields are base fields of commerce, and I added two custom fields to indicate whether a dinosaur is veggie. So if it, oh, this is too much. Yeah. If a dinosaur is a veggie dinosaur, or if it, is, if it can fly. So those are the only custom fields I added. So that's basically the setup of the whole website. Then I made just an overview of all the products in the website where you can add them, add them to your cart, and then a cart link to view the cart, obviously. All right, so commerce conditions. I enabled the promotion module, module. The promotion module allows you to add discounts to your websites, obviously. And a promotion, I added, I already, uh, I already added one. A promotion can have conditions. So you, for example, can say, this promotion is only pliable to customers with the role, I don't know, VIP or 15% um, discount role or something like that, but you can all also implement your own condition. For example, I want a condition to give a percentage off when a dinosaur is vegetarian. All right, how can we do this? Like I said before, I'm sorry, I'm going back to my slides. Like I said before, we have to add a class with a namespace, add the annotation and implement the class. I'm going to show you how I did this for the condition. So, um, all right, let me zoom in. Is this somewhat readable or not? Is it, is it somewhat readable? Okay, all right. So, as you see, I added a class with following namespace. This is a required namespace for commerce to pick up your plugin as a commerce condition plugin. I added a special commerce condition plugin annotation, which defines the ID, uh, the label, uh, the category of the uh, condition, and on what the, against what entity type the condition will be evaluated. Next, I implemented the class, and I implement, implemented the evaluate function. This function yeah, is pretty uh, straightforward. It checks if my uh, entity which I, I bought has uh, a field, field veggie, and if that field is true or false. 
So when a dinosaur is veggie, it will return true, and the condition will be applied. If it isn't veggie or the field veggie doesn't exist on the entity, it will return false, and the condition won't be applied. So back to our demo website. Um, I'm going to change this. Yeah, OK. I'm going to say I want a per percentage of each matching product. So let's say 10% discount for every dinosaur that is veggie. I'm going to enable my promotion again because I disabled it. OK, enabled. And I'm going to save it. So first of all, we're going to add um, a dinosaur that isn't veggie, this one. I'm going to add it to my cart. I'm going to my cart. And you'll see just a basic line item with a subtotal and a total on the order. Well, now I'm going back to my products overview and I'm going to add a veggie dinosaur. I'm sorry, going to my cart right now. Oh, okay, we have a discount of 90 cents. It's a 10% discount on this product. So this is how we can add custom conditions which are mostly based on custom fields on your product variations or products or even order items. Next thing we can do, like you already saw I think, Commerce also uh, offers different plugins for offer types. So Commerce offers buy X, get A, a fixed amount of each matching product, fixed amount of the subtotal and per percentage of matching project products and percentage of the subtotal. So I couldn't really think of a use case uh, that made sense because I think 99% of the cases you have enough with the uh, offer types that commerce provides. So I made a random percentage of each matching product offer type. So uh, your uh, discount will just be randomly decided every time you add uh, something to your cart, which makes total sense. All right, I'm going to change the offer type to uh, my custom offer type. I'm going to show you how I did that. And I want to only want to apply it to the veggie dinosaurs. I'm going to save my promotion again. I'm going back to my code. Promotion offer. Okay, zoom in. Same, same three steps again. The namespace, the annotation, which says, hey, I'm a com commerce promotion offer. And then the class which implements the apply function. Here you can see, yeah, here I'm just determining a random percentage between 5 and 15. And here you can see we add the uh, offer by adding an adjustment to each order item. What is an adjustment? An adjustment is an, an object provided by commerce which, allow you to, which allows you to manipulate the price to increase it or in our case decrease it in a promotion. So here we're just adding an adjustment to the order type with um, a random percentage. So now if we go to our cards, um, note if I'm now, so if I click update cards, commerce won't recalculate all the uh, prices because uh, commerce notices nothing has changed. So I will change it to two. So now as the discount is 90 cents, I'm going to update my cards. And go and change it back to one, and it should be something else than 90 cents um, because it's random. Okay, it's 90 cents again. Well, I'll try it again. Right. Okay. So and now it's 63 cents. So this is our random offer plugin. All right. So we did very useful stuff with this plugin. A total sense. Is it, it was is it calculating the discount on the uh, veggie diets or alone? Or on yeah. So you can see here in my code, and I'm applying the adjustment on the order item, not on the order. So for each order item, which uh, evaluates the condition or conditions, which in our case is the dinosaur is veggie, the discount will be applied. 
but you can also do add an adjustment on the order. If you say we want only one uh, one uh, discount per order, you can just add the adjustment on. Simple as this. Um, sorry, dollar order, and this will work. So then the adjustment will be applied on the order. All right. Next plugin is this is the promotion offer okay the commerce checkout flow so commerce provides a basic checkout flow I will show you checkout flows edits widths one two three four steps so the basic uh, checkout flow in commerce contains four steps also a sidebar but this isn't a step it's just a sidebar on each step so four steps um, I'm going to show you you can see this I'm going to my cards I'm going to click checkout okay there are only three steps here why uh, I don't have uh, any um, payment options so commerce notices oh there aren't any payment options we'll leave this step step out so but if you have payment options there will be four steps all right for my this doesn't suffice uh, my needs I want an extra step so how can we do this we can just like before add an extra plugin of the type checkout flow so just the same all over again namespace annotation which says I'm a commerce checkout flow and what we're doing here is I'm extending from the default step out flow from commerce and I'm just overriding the get steps function what what my function does is says parent give me all your steps and add the fun fact step in the front of all the other steps so this will be the first step now all right and that's it I'm just adding an extra step all right I'm going to show you if you then side note every time you add a plugin you have to clear cache for Drupal to pick it up so normally you would have to clear the cache every now and then so I'm going to my checkout flows and you'll see I made a dyno flow we're going to uh, edit it okay and you see here our extra step fun facts but there are, is, isn't any content in it so you can see no pain is displayed I don't know if it's readable but this says no pain is displayed so we're going to add a custom pane in our custom step again we can do this by adding a plugin like so um, of the type commerce checkout pane and the pane can be assigned to a step in the checkout flow a step can contain zero or multiple panes it's for you to decide or for the end user to decide um, I'm assigning my pane default to the step fun facts I'm going to wrap it in a container you also can provide field sets I'm sorry field sets and then uh, commercial render it as a field set, as a collapsible field set I think so that I'm using container um, so most important in this class is the build pane form and here I'm just going to render an image an image which we configured on our configuration form on our pane I'm going to show you so the only required function in this uh, class is this function so you have to tell commerce how to render the pane right you can also provide configuration so I made a simple configuration form like so which has one field which can provide an image URL and this image URL will be used to render the image here so in the back end this looks like this no pane is displayed we have our dyno images pane I'm going to this zoom thing is not really okay you see this nope I have to save it first I think try again uh, okay update nope come on 
Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm struggling. Okay, safe. I'm gonna edit it again. Okay, now we have our Dino Images pane with following image URL that will be used to render the image. And this can be configured here. Update. Now we made our custom checkout flow, but we still have to assign, we still have to say to Commerce, hey Commerce, we don't want to use the default flow anymore, we want to use our own flow. How can we do this? In the configuration of Commerce on the order type, so you can define multiple order, order types. I think 90 of, or even more 95% of the time you only have one order type, but it's, it is possible to add multiple order types. So we're going to edit our other order type. Here the checkout flow, we're going to change to Dino flow. Okay, cool. We're going to check this out in our front end, in our web shop. So I'll going to do, I'm going to delete my current order because this order is already saved with the default flow. Um, and I'm going to create a new order with the new um, Dino flow. So I'm going to add a Dino to my cart. I'm going to my cart and I'll check out. All right, now we have our fun facts, our order information, our review and our complete. So this way you can totally customize the review process, the checkout process of commerce by adding or checkout flows or extra panes to your custom checkout flow or, flow or the default checkout flow. You see, this is the sidebar, which I was talking about in the paints, in the uh, steps of the checkout flow, I'm sorry. All right, next, commerce checkout flow, we did that. Then commerce checkout pane, we also did that. Our cool dino T-Rex. All right, commerce tax type. So um, default commerce already provides a lot of tax type. I'm going to show you store so again in, in most of the cases it will suffice so you can add the Belgian VAT is the one I made uh, for the demo so you can ignore this one but this is all default commerce so European all the European VATs are already supported if you for example have a web shop in the US there could be a country module, I don't know, but you can implement a custom text type yourself. Just, again, by adding uh, text type, same thing, namespace, annotation, I'm a commerce text type, and implementing your class, and just apply again with an adjustment, the text type. In this case, it won't decrease the price, it will increase the price. Okay, we can give a label to our adjustments, to our adjustments. I'm going to, uh, I already made the text type, but it is disabled, so I'm going to enable it. Enable. I'm going back to my cards, to, yeah, to my cards. I'll have to recalculate the prices and we should see a VAT. All right, VAT is added. This, that's how you can manipulate VATs by adding text type plugin. Okay, now we have, it's already coming nicely together. I have just one more plugin left, I think. Yeah, payment gateway. So uh, this is like a payment method. Um, Commerce calls it payment gateways, for example. Um, uh, PayPal integration, uh, dot integration, Molly integration, those are all payment gateways. So I made a custom payment gateway for our purpose so you can pay with Dino checks. Um, uh, payment gateway, which actually doesn't do a thing, it just has an annotation. And it extends from the manual payments method from uh, from Commerce. I just want to show you how easy it is to um, add extra payment gateways. Of course, this one doesn't do a thing. I'll show you. I'll enable it in the backend. Commerce configuration. 
payment gateways and we're going to enable our dyno check so what I did um, those are the payment instructions you can per payment gateway per payment type you can um, configure payment instructions so our payment instructions are raw all right now if you go back to our shopping cart and go to checkout we should see on the next step all right we can choose our payment methods dyno check so i'm going to pay with a dyno check um which doesn't actually do the do anything right now okay those were i think most of the useful plugins that commerce provides for you as a developer to use to extend to alter to do whatever you want um, are there any questions about those plugins no, Commerce provides other plugins also, but these were the most useful ones. So next, mm -hmm. we're going to order processors. It's a really fancy word, but actually the principle is quite easy. So what is an order preprocessor? I think you all know Drupal services. It's just a special service defined by Commerce, and it allows you to uh, manipulate prices on order level or order item level true to again true again price adjustments so this is a code snippet from um, uh, the commerce core and you'll see commerce looks for all services tagged with um, it won't be readable but this says I'm looking for all services tagged with commerce order or the processor and the service has to have an attribute adjustment type. I'm going to show you in a bit what that means. But if your service uh, has following tag and adjustment type, then Commerce will pick it up as a commerce, uh, an order processor. All right. How can we achieve this? Three steps. We have to define our adjustment type, which will be used by Commerce. So this can be done by just adding a JAML file with the name your module dot commerce underscore adjustment underscore types of JAML and this is the contents of the JAML file so um, this is pretty abstract I'm going to show you a, a really good example uh, in a few minutes so this is how you assign adjustments this is how it will translate in the backend UI so our custom adjustments and the amounts we have to, step two, we have to define our service and our services are JAML. And this is just a normal service, but it has tag, attack, commerce order, order preprocessor, with our new re, newly created adjustment type, custom adjustment. This will make sure, I'm sorry, that commerce will pick it up as an order processor. Third step is implementing the processor, which is the hardest part. It isn't actually that hard. Uh, okay, I'm going to show you with a good example. So I made a JAML file with an ad adjustment type Dino Shipping, and so we're gonna use the order processor to apply shipping rates to our order. So I made a Dino Shipping rates, <laughs> Dino Shipping um, adjustment type. I'm sorry. I then. In my services dot jaml added this service with a tag with the necessary tag and our dyno shipping adjustment type so now commercial pick this up as an order processor and of course i made this class and implemented it like so so i'm just i'm going to remove this all right what the, what this code does is it checks if the dinosaur can fly and if it can fly there is uh, yeah, no shipping cost as the dino can fly to its destination if it can't fly will charge two euros per dinosaur all right how can we see this in the checkout i'll show you um, I'm going back to my cart and we have uh, one dinosaur that can fly obviously so we'll add a dinosaur that can fly 
add to cart. Um, all right, we have two dinosaurs that can fly, one that can fly. All right, there's shipping is two euros for these two dinosaurs. So the shipping rates aren't applied for this dinosaur because it flies to its own destination. Cool. So order processors are the way to go if you want to manipulate the price on in the context of an order or an order item. There is also uh, already a contrib shipping module. So that contrib shipping module will use this functionality. So order processors to apply its shipping rates. Of course, this module is configurable through the backend. Our uh, code isn't. All right. These were order processors, I think. Yep. Any remarks or questions about order processors? No. Okay. Next part are price resolvers. So, price resolvers allow you to um, offer different prices for the same products based on conditions. So, for example, a uh, use case that uh, is valid is price per quantity. Let's say you order 50 uh, items, uh, 50 products of one item, you get a, a discount of 5%, over 250, you get a discount of 10%. Uh, this can be achieved to true price resolvers. But you could say, what about order pre uh, processor? Those are those also manipulate price. The big difference is that order processors always work in the context of an order or an order item. Price resolvers don't need orders or order items. Let's say, for example, you have a product. You're on the product page where you can add the product to your cart, and you want to give a discount to members with a VIP role. If you do this uh, with an order processor, the discount will be applied when you add the item to your cart. Because if you don't add it to your cart, the context of the order or the order item isn't known yet. If you do it through a price resolver, then the price will automatically also, without the context of the order or the order item, will be calculated. So price resolvers can be used by normal formatters, for example, on the product page. They are also accompanied by context objects, so you can write conditions on that context. It's really simple to implement. I'm not going to show it again in the um, presentation. I'm just going straight to the code and just checking if I'm not. Yeah, OK. All right. This requires two steps, two simple steps. Add an extra service service in your services.jungle and tag it with commerce price price resolver that way commerce knows oh this is a, spe a special service which will alter the price through a price resolver second step just implement here your class I'll open this class uh, i made a quantity price resolver so the only thing this function does is it checks if your quantity is between 1 and 50 just use the normal price if it's between 50 and 250 uh, give a 10 percent discount and if it oh is it, if it's over 250 give a 15 percent discount all right i'm going to my web shop uh to my cards um so this unit price is 899. I'm going to change it to uh, 255, and it should yeah it altered the unit price. Of course, in our example, I'm going. I said price resolvers can be used outside the context of orders and other items. So I'm going to the product page. Right here, right now, yeah, if I'm changing this to 255. You could yeah, implement an AJAX call which um, executes the price resolver and then update this price here, but it will get calculated when you add it to the card, of course. Another example which I gave, if you have, for example, a user with a 
Roll VIP, which you get always a 10% discount. You could already display it right here. If you are logged in as a VIP user, then your price would be eight, uh, eight euros or something like that. I'm going to add to my cart. Okay, 500 dead. All right, those are price resolvers. So also to manipulate the price, uh, in this case, so the, um, the quantity logic, you could also achieve this with an order processor, of course, uh, but in this case it's better because quantity doesn't require to be the order or the order item known to implement it through a price resolver. Hope this makes sense. Another example, oh yeah, this was the VIP. So if uh, an account has the role VIP, give a 5% 5 5 discount, otherwise just return a default price. Any questions about price resolvers? No. Okay. Then the, I'm going time check. Okay. Um, event subscribers, I'm going to skip one, but okay, what are event subscribers? Event subscribers are basically the old hooks. So uh, it allows to um, allows components to interact with each other. So one component will dispatch an event. For example, a, not, a node says, hey, I'm updated, and other parts of your code can subscribe to that event and then do something. So Commerce also provided multiple um, events. And one very useful one, so these are the events provided by Commerce Core. So uh, an event when the cart is emptied, an event when um, the um, cart entity is updated, and so on and so on. But one that is, I thought, very useful is order item comparison fields. What does this event do? So by default, Commerce, if you add something to your cart, so we have now 510 uh, bronchosauruses in our shopping carts. I'm going to add another one. I'm going to my carts. 511. So by default, Drupal Commerce is going to combine products which are of the same type and of the same product variation type. You can disable this, by default it is done. But let's say you can, when ordering, so for example, let's say true, you want to order and there's an extra field here where you can indicate when you want it to be delivered, today, tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow. Well, if we add two uh, brachiosauruses, um, one delivered tomorrow, one delivered the day after tomorrow, yeah, um, then in our cards, commerce shouldn't combine them because actually they, they are two different things. Well, with the event, I'm sorry, back to my slides, with the event, order item comparison fields, you can achieve this. So here you can change the fields on which commerce checks if a product is the same, so it should be combined or not. How can we do this? Again, simple. Add this event subscriber by uh, adding a service and tag it with event subscriber and then just simply implement, implement your class. I'm going to show this again. I added this event subscriber uh, to my service of Jamal, tagged it with event subscriber. And then I made my event subscriber class, uh, event subscriber, yep, right here. And I'm telling Drupal, hey Drupal, I want to subscribe to the order item comparison uh, fields event. So if that event gets called, I want to do something. And what do I want to do? I want to execute this function on order item comparison. So on order on order item comparison, what am I doing? I'm adding just to the already existing fields, product type and product variation type, which are added by Commerce itself. I'm adding an extra field, field delivery. So now Commerce will check if field delivery is the same, I will combine the items in my cart. If it's not, otherwise it will be separate um, order items. Like so, I have to change uh, some config um, so, uh, order, order item types, I already prepared it, but I have to enable it. 
So I'm going to, on my order card form, or add to card form, add the delivery. So the delivery can be selected, and I'm going to enable uh, the delivery uh, in my card view. So I'm going to change the view and show the delivery. Uh, card form, edit, um, hidden, and I'm going to show it. Apply. Okay, now, um, if we refresh our cards, you'll see that default, I, I, I've set it to tomorrow, these two have delivery of tomorrow. Well, I'm going back to my product overview. I'm going to order a Brachiosaurus, but I want it delivered today to add to cards. Oh, sorry. I'm a, I'm and these are separate line items. So this is a very useful event to uh, manage the combining of items. All right. Um, as I said before, Drupal Commerce provides um, a lot of events, but I think this one was the most useful to show. Um, all the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. Um, all right, event subscribers, any questions or remarks? Nope. Um, okay, but um, I. I have another um, part, workflow, workflows and transitions, but um, I don't think there's um, enough time to, um, yeah, that won't be enough and I, would, I won't rush through it. So I'm going to skip this one. If you really want to know about uh, workflow, I'm just going to explain uh, really short workflows. So what are workflows? Um, an order can have three different states, drafts, uh, placed and completed. And this is called a workflow. So it is defined. A draft can be changed to placed. A place can be changed to completed. A completed can can't be changed anymore to a draft. So that is a workflow and transition. You can also provide your own workflows and transitions. For example, let's say you want to add an order. You want to save an order in your backlog as a customer. You could create a workflow with an extra state backlog. And uh, if the user uh, I'm just going to show it structure. I'm not going to show any code because there isn't any time left. But um, uh, is it in check? So our Dino flow. I'm going to add an extra pane order to backlog. Um, oh, I'm going to add in the sidebar so it's visible on every step. So my shopping cards. I'm going to check out. All right, so let's say, for example, transfer to backlog. When a user clicks this button, then the order state will change to backlog. Um, and then you can make a view for the user. Hey, show my backlog and add, again, a button over there. Put it back into my cards. And how do you put it back into your card? Just by changing the state to uh, draft and flag the card boolean on the order. So that's how you can that's a use case for how you uh, for custom workflows and transitions. Actually, pretty simple. You have to define a JAML file which uh, defines your states, all the possible transitions, and then you have to uh, yeah, write custom codes when your uh, order has to be transition transitioned to your custom states. So everything uh, we've seen um, there are other things but these are the most important things in commerce which as a developer you can use to like totally change the default um, workings of commerce so it has a lot of opportunities um, one more thing there's also commerce contrib uh, the ones we've used are commerce combined cards sometimes in some edge, case, edge cases one user can have multiple cards that uh, yeah so the, this module will automa automatically combine the cards to one card. So then commercial shipping, like I've told, uh, adds shipping rates through UI. And commercial currency dissolver is going to, if you have multiple currencies in your store, for example, US dollar and euro, 
uh, it will uh, do the translations between those uh, currencies. All right, uh, that was it. I don't know if there are any uh, questions. Yeah.